Hello everyone, my name is Aura and welcome to the 22nd devlog of my base building game Chambers of Devious Design First of all, real quick, I just opened a Discord server so if you want to have a chat and hear the latest news come join me there, I'll have the link in the description In this devlog, I'm getting my game ready for the upcoming Steam Next Fest and finishing up all the features I need for that. All right, let's start with a quick heads up. So if you're planning on participating to a Steam Next Fest or some other festival thing where you need to have a demo, I would advise to set up the demo page and the settings in Steamworks as soon as possible. When I started setting up the demo page in Steamworks, at least this planned release date section said that you need to do this like two weeks before the release of the demo. Now I'm not fully sure if that applies to demos, it seems kind of funny, but at least it said that here, so it's better to be safe than sorry. I actually recorded everything I did here, so I will have a video about uploading a demo at some point in time. And then if we get to the actual game, the first thing I did was finish up on the main menu, get everything working in here. And I of course had to include all my plugs here. So if you actually found this video, thanks to these links here, a very special welcome to you. I think we've come a full circle of some kind here. I also added a little ad here for the full game. So hopefully anyone who tries out my demo will like get so excited that they will immediately go wishlist the game. One thing I had to spend quite a bit of time on was key bindings. I think they look quite nice now, but last time when I worked on these, I had some issues and <laughs> I didn't really leave any good notes for myself what were the issues and how I would go about fixing them. So that's a lesson for my future self to leave good notes because I had to spend a bit of extra time to brush up on what, what I needed actually to do here. But luckily everything works now at least for one player so that's all good for the demo. And in case you're wondering what this plus button here does with that zoom, it actually opens up like this additional key bindings. So the reason why it works like this is that in the new Unity input system uh, you can have like a axis binding. So for example the scroll wheel. So it can go in two directions, either negative or positive. So positive scrolls up and negative scrolls down. But you can't actually like rebind it easily into two separate buttons. So I actually need to have these like separate bindings here if I want to change this something else rather than a scroll wheel. I don't know if some of you have used the new unit input system and have a better way of handling this. I would love to hear about it. Then speaking of key bindings, it reminded me of the tutorial which I also finished. Let's just skip this dialogue in the start. So yeah, I made a simple tutorial like this. Little notes here and this is what I'm <laughs> most proud of in the tutorial. So I actually have the like key bindings included in here and they are dynamic. So if you actually change the key bindings before going to the tutorial, this will actually reflect the changes and show the like newest, newest selection. So then other stuff I need to do for the demo. One big thing was balancing. So before I kind of had everything randomized, like for example this room scores, the amount of doors and things like that. So what I did was try to come up with these formulas for room values. Now I don't know how good the formulas I came up with actually are, but it's my first attempt at balancing the room, so each room type should now have like this about like same value in the game. Of course there's still some randomization going on, but if you're talking about averages, then yeah, on average they should be about the same value now. I think one tough part about 
coming up with formulas is that you want them to be complex enough to like fulfill their purpose but at the same time I think they should be like simple enough that you can actually understand them tomorrow when you look at the code so that's a bit of a balancing effort like what kind of things you want to actually like account for in the formula you could make it like super detailed but I don't think that is always like the best way to go about it. Then I also did balancing for other things like these demands here and some of the room effects and things like that. Another thing I worked on were the musics in the game. So I tried to roleplay an audio engineer a bit. I went through all the music I have in the game and tried to make them a bit more uniform uh, with each other. So all the audio levels at least in the music should be fairly similar to each other. Some of the music tracks I have in the game also had these like very high peaks within them. So I tried to level those out a bit. Overall I think I did a decent job with the music. <laughs> I'm not an audio engineer so it's not perfect by far I'm sure but I hope they should be okay. Oh and one issue I had with the music actually was that a portion of my music where it is like normal tracks but a large portion of them where it is loops so that poses a problem when the music changes in the game so if you have a loop it likely stops like bam, into a wall the music but if you have a track those usually have like a more natural ending to them so that was one thing I needed to account for and at first I had this like great plans like these technical ideas like okay I can detect uh, with what is a loop and what is a track so like for loops maybe I can loop it like two or three times in the game and then have like a fade out at the end on the code side but after thinking about it for a bit, I figured that, okay, building something like this could easily cause some issues and like potential for new bugs. So yeah, I think my first idea would have gone to the side of over-engineering a bit. So my next idea was very simple. I did it all manually. If I had, for example, a loop of less than one minute, I went ahead and edited the audio file and had it loop for like two or three times and then just saved that. So basically it now functions like a normal track. It has a natural like fade in and fade out in the track itself. So I don't need to do anything on the code side to <laughs> touch the clip. It took a few hours to do this all but now once I have done it I don't really need to touch it at all unless I decide to add some new music to the game but even then that should be a pretty fast thing to do and it was actually quite good that I did this manually because while I was doing it I noticed that some of the loops actually weren't loops at all so while in a good loop I think it can be hard to notice when the loop actually ends and then starts the loop again but in many of these tracks I noticed that it was very obvious when it ended and in some there was like even a two second like blank spot at the end so I don't think that really is a loop so I tried to adjust those a bit so that uh, when the loop ends and starts it's a bit more natural then one thing I recommend you also do in your own game is to come up with your own Error Log Writer. This is something I learned from in Mortal Glory. Unity actually has its own log when the player plays the game. But the downside of that is that it actually only logs the last two play sessions. In Mortal Glory, many times a problem for me was that when a player reported a bug and then sent me the log files, he or she may have restarted the game like a few times and <laughs> Uh, if you did that, then the log files actually didn't tell you anything useful. So what I have here is a 
very simple custom logging system. Most of what I have here I actually got from Unity documentation, I think this part. So I basically just subscribe this method to this like event here. So whenever a log message is received, it then runs this method I have here. And what I have done here is that I have filtered out the like basic logging type. So I will get everything else that is in this list. So I'm most interested in the like error and yeah, maybe the exception logs. And the warning is also nice to know, but I don't want to know like everything. So the log file won't get like cluttered with <laughs> all this useless stuff. And at the bottom I actually have one important thing also, this on application quit. So when the game shuts down, it will run this right lines method I have here, which basically takes everything I have in this log list and writes it into a file. So the end result is something like this. Now there isn't really anything super useful in this file currently, but in an actual situation, this log could include error details from like 10 game sessions or something. So it would be really useful for me to just take a look at this and get all the, all the needed details. One other thing I recommend you do if you haven't done it already is check the import settings of your assets. At least the audio files, I think those are most important. So for example, in my case, when I created a build of the game and tried to run it, there was like a 3 to 5 second delay before the actual game started and I felt like that could be quite annoying just looking at the blank screen and nothing happens. So what actually caused that was that I had this like big music files in the game and those were all preloaded before the game started and that caused a significant delay when starting the game. And the fix to that was actually very simple. I just changed this load type to streaming. So now the music files aren't like loaded at the beginning of the game. They are streamed when they are actually needed. Now I don't recommend you have streaming in all of the audio files. For example, in this like short sound effects I have in the game, I do load them at the start of the game. So when they are needed, the game actually doesn't need so many resources to play the file. Then what else? I actually went ahead and removed some of the content in the game. Like for example this specific room types or abilities. The reason for that is that I didn't want the demo to have too much content. I think it's a bit of a balancing effort because you want the demo to be fun but you still don't want it to like contain too much of your actual game. So there won't be like players who play the demo and then are like, okay, yeah, I had my fix, I saw everything the game had to offer, so no need to buy the actual game. So yeah, I did that and actually with that the demo was pretty much finished. Now I still need to do some testing and probably some bug fixes, but otherwise the demo is now finished and I'm ready for the Steam Next Fest. I'm Really excited to see and hear how the players receive the game, if they hate it or not, and <laughs> all things like that. And hey, that's pretty much everything I did in the last two weeks. I would love to hear what you think about these things I did. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.